The movie begins in an isolated institute where prisoners are taken for psychological treatment every time they're woken up from their sleep. Dr. David, one of the lead psychotherapists in the facility, is speaking with an inmate that had just been pulled out of sleep. He shows him a video of his daughter expressing how devastated that she was after he killed her mom. The prisoner is distraught by the video and keeps telling the doctor that he was falsely accused of the crime and that he didn't actually kill his wife. David acknowledges the man's claim, handling the situation very professionally. After their session, the prisoner is put back to sleep in a small chamber filled with water. While David was overlooking the process, the man who looks after the sleeping bodies, called Vali, tells him that he can tell what the prisoner had done by just looking at their faces and guesses that the man that they were putting to sleep was involved in a crime of passion. When David makes a joke about the man taking his job, the caretaker explains that he was just happy looking after their bodies and would gladly leave the poor souls to him. Taken aback by Vali's words, David tells him that he was making him sound like a priest to which the man agrees, pointing out that the prisoners confessed their sins to him and he would send them to receive penance. After sending off the pod, David goes home and washes away the exhaustion of the day and when he gets out of the shower, his girlfriend Viola was playing a tiny piano while sitting on their bed. After he appreciates the piece that she wrote, the two kiss and fall on the bed. When David wakes up, he finds Viola looking at a picture that he kept hidden inside his book, and with a hurt look on her face, she asks him if that was his ex. Seeing that he upset her, David apologizes and tells her that he didn't mean to, expressing his love for her. While they were conversing, he gets a call from Vali, who asks him to come down to the common room immediately. When he gets there, Vali introduces him to Andrea, who apologizes for having called him down in a rush, and David is told that Andrea had come to take over his position in a month and he had arrived early to observe him in action. Later, David speaks to the head of the facility and expresses his surprise at the news that he's gonna be replaced. She explains that he's worked there more than anyone and she felt as though it was important to preserve his mental state because it could be detrimental to his health if they let him continue to absorb so much pain every day. And the following day, Andrea joins David in his session and start to ask questions about the work. When asked about the images displayed on the large monitor, David explains that they were pictures chosen by the prisoners so that it keeps them grounded. The prisoner who had been awakened was a woman who was sentenced to 9 years of sleep. Gently, he reminds the woman of a crime, telling her that she had accidentally killed two little boys while driving on wet asphalt with a few drinks in her system. The woman, remembering what she had done, goes into shock but manages to calm down quickly. After work, David takes Viola out to dinner and tells her about his job. Viola offers her house as a temporary stay until he manages to rent one and he agrees, and the following day, David returns from his jog and goes to his office to find Andrea, who tells him that a prisoner had gone through an emergency awakening due to his empty file. When he goes through it, David realizes that Andrea was right and there was actually no record of the man in their system. While they were looking around, the smug prisoner addresses David, telling him that he knew who he was and what he was there for but is unwilling to share the information. Although he wants to send him back to sleep, Andrea argues that they can't until they do the necessary tests. Telling Andrea to keep an eye on the prisoner, David heads down to the area where the prisoners leave their personal belongings and tries to open the locker but his keycard refuses to work. Suddenly, he hears the alarms blaring and heads to the pod showing a red light, finding Andrea standing in front of it. After chastising Andrea for leaving the prisoner alone, David fixes the oxygen problem in the woman's tank and when Vali arrives, he hears the argument of the two men and decides to pull out a gun on both of them until things are resolved. When they arrive at David's office, they find Viola taking care of the prisoner, who is pretending to be hurt. When Vali tries to check the man's health, the prisoner grabs his gun and shoots him in the chest. He then takes Viola hostage with the gun pointed right at her head and forces David to cuff himself to the chair. Once he does, Viola and the prisoner start to kiss, confusing David further. Unexpectedly, the prisoner starts choking Viola, his hand gripping furiously at her neck, and David manages to free his hand and stabs the prisoner in the neck, instantly killing him. He then awakens and David finds himself in a too familiar chair, his hair shaved and Dr. Daughteressa asking him if he remembered anything. He tells her 
later that he knew he was in prison for killing a prisoner, and looking at the picture of Viola that he chose to have, she asks him if he remembered how they met. David flashes back to the first time he met Viola in his office with her son after they had come in to leave a message for her father who was in prison. David finds out that Viola didn't have to come but her son persisted, and later, David found out that Viola's husband Carlo was actually a neurologist who had murdered the woman that he was having an affair with. A short while later, David goes looking for her and finds out that she plays in a string quartet. After attending the show one night and waiting for her to get out, he speaks to her and compliments her on her abilities. After asking her about her son, he offers to buy her drinks at the bar, and telling him that she hadn't been going out much lately, she asked if he wanted to come to her house for a glass of wine, and the two ended up sleeping together. When David explains how he had killed Viola's husband, the doctor corrects him and tells him the true story. After he and Viola had dated for 11 months, she met a man who told her that he knew her husband well, explaining all of the evidence on him was actually planted. She begs David to go through the files to prove his innocence, but he apparently refused. After deleting all the files on the man so people assumed the pod was empty, David unhooks the oxygen tank so he would suffocate to death, thinking that Viola would forget about him in time. David remembers that his action had not only caused the death of Carlo, but also another prisoner's life. The doctor tells him that he had still 10 years on his sentence, but he could serve it while being on parole, and David had already served 10 years and was now told that he was eligible for the reintegration program, warning that he needed to follow the instructions to the letter. David is given an apartment and told that he would need to meet with a support group every week, and he was obliged to sign in every day and wasn't allowed to leave the city. A police officer could come into his house and search it whenever they needed, and he would be called to the precinct at any time and he would have to show up. Weeks later, David has started a job as a clerk at a hotel, and one night, while he was walking home from work, he sees a poster of Viola indicating that she played in the club. After going in and seeing her, he feels nervous and walks out, but stops by the call of his name. Viola angrily tells him that he shouldn't have been released so early after what he had done, telling him that he made her go through many troublesome years, and she asks him to never show his face to her again, and feeling ashamed, David leaves. One night, his old friend Vali comes to visit him and seemed pretty sad by the state that he was in. Giving him his gun, Vali explains that there were many out there looking to harm him and tells him to take the gun so he can protect himself. A few days later, David finds a picture of a fountain left in his house and goes to investigate. While looking around, he sees Anna's husband, a prisoner and patient who had supposedly died when David unhooked the oxygen from the pod of Viola's husband. After speaking to the husband, he finds out that Anna was investigating the prison system when she was actually imprisoned and was even collaborating with Carlo. Going to Viola's house, he begs her to listen to him and explains his findings, and now sure that they've been set up, Viola mentions that the man who had contacted her about her husband's innocence was part of the ministry group that was responsible for the creation of hypersleep. The two find the man while he was leaving his office and ask him all about the innocent people put in prison and he confirms their suspicion, telling David that he too was innocent. He then tells them to never come looking for him because it could be dangerous for all of them. Viola and David rekindle their love after they find out the truth and Viola apologizes for getting him involved in the first place by asking him to help her husband. That night, the two spend a passionate night together, and while he was returning to his car, he finds a memory device hidden inside the hat that he had retrieved after being released from prison and opens it on his phone. Inside, he finds a video of him speaking to Carlo, who tells him that the inmates are fed false dreams while they sleep. He explains to him that he didn't actually kill his wife as everyone thought, and that he was actually framed. Suddenly, he hears screaming and sees two men dragging Viola out of her house and inside of a car. David follows the car to a huge mansion where a gala was being thrown, and sneaking his way inside, he sees Andrea, who is now a renowned doctor, and confronts him by taking him aside. Andrea confesses that he was the one who killed those prisoners, but that David condemned them to death by opening up old files. Taking Andrea hostage, he pulls him out in front of President Costa and demands that Viola be returned to him, and he tries to reveal how hypersleep makes a person lose their identity, but Costa argues that it has made the streets safer for everyone. From the other room, Viola is brought inside the room by a police officer who hands her off to David, and the smug president smiles and tells him to enjoy his new life. 
Angry, David points his gun at Costa, but Viola stops him and asks him to take her home instead. On his way out, he has a hallucination of his dead wife, and then everything turns bright. The scene then changes, and we see David still in the facility, being checked by the doctor. Remembering everything, he tells her that he's innocent, and has the evidence to prove it hidden inside his hat. Understanding his confusion, she tells him that the evidence accumulated on him was overwhelming, and that there was nothing that he could do. Calming him down, she explains that he had served a long sentence, and that he had been in hypersleep for 35 years, marking his 80th birthday. The doctor gives him a mirror so he can look at himself, and he's shocked to see his incredibly aged face. She also tells him that he would finish his sentence in a year and would be a free man then. After putting him back to sleep, she checks David's belongings and finds the memory card hidden in his hat. A look of shock crosses her face as she contemplates the truth in David's words. The camera takes us through the storage unit where hundreds upon thousands of housing criminals were aligned, all dreaming about something that they've been told. The camera comes to a stop in front of David's chamber, focusing on the shriveled up face that had been hypersleep for 35 years. Inside David's head, he dreams that he is gone for a jog like he always used to, and then returns home to find Viola, who tells him that it took him a lifetime to get there, and smiling lovingly, David tells her that he's there now, and the movie comes to an end.